GitHub gets passkey support in beta, Kubernetes hits 100,000 stars, and the teens are already reverse engineering threads, plus a pick of the week that will have you thinking about it even when you're with your boo. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. So our upload schedule in the last month or so has been a little bit, mm, shall we say, frenetic. And that is entirely on me. I'm going to take the blame uh, for it, but also maybe blame Summer. I don't know. Anyway, we are back, and we look forward to being more consistent going forward. My shirt this week is courtesy of Miss Taylor Swift and her seminal album, Speak Now. Speak Now, Taylor's version, is out now. Please stream it, except for the lyric change for Better Than Revenge because we don't know her. All right, enough of all of that. Let's move on to the news. First up, a huge congrats to the Kubernetes project for hitting 100,000 stars on GitHub. Kubernetes, if you're not familiar, is an open source container orchestration system, and it originally started at Google, but it moved over to the nonprofit CNCF a million years ago. And it is safe to say that Kubernetes, more than any other piece of tech, with the exception of the OG, which is Docker, has done more for the cloud native development and uh, deployment ecosystem than any other tool. Its influence and reach cannot be overstated. I went back and looked and saw the very first GitHub commit from September 8th, 2014. And so in just nine years, it's been amazing to see its growth. So shout out to the Kubernetes core team, all contributors past and present, and uh, anyone who can hear Kate's and, and nod knowingly. Also shout out to star-history.com for this graph that we're showing. Moving on to some great passwordless news, github.com is now supporting passwordless authentication via passkeys, and this is now in public beta. So passkeys, for anyone who is not familiar, is a passwordless standard. It was created by members of two different standard groups, the W3C and the FIDO Alliance, and it has broad support from companies including Apple and Microsoft and Google, among others. And the whole idea of passkeys and of passwordless in general is to basically cut down on the security risks that are associated with normal passwords. So, you know, things like, you know, phishing um, attacks, uh, server leaks, and, you know, weak or reused credentials or passwords. So the idea is that I have a key that's tied to my device and it has a pair on a website that I want to visit and I can then authenticate that key using my fingerprint or a UV key or a QR code or my phone, whatever. It's very cool stuff. And now you can use passkeys on github.com. So if you opt into this, you can upgrade your existing security keys to passkeys, and you can use those in place of both your password and your 2FA method. So you don't have to use both, you can just use one. As I said, this is opt-in, so if you still want to use your normal password and 2FA codes or your existing security keys, you can. But you can also upgrade your existing security keys to pass keys, which is great. And depending on what system that you're using with your pass keys, you can even sync them across devices. So iCloud Keychain has sync support, and so do our friends at 1Password using the 1Password browser extension, the, the one that's currently in beta. I've got links to the blog post and the docs uh, page down below. This is really exciting stuff. And I'd be remiss to talk about pass keys without giving a shout out to one of my very best friends, Ricky, who works on this stuff for one of the big companies associated with the spec. Pass keys are the best and so are they. I love you, Ricky. So see the links in the description down below for all of this. Moving on to some fun CLI news, the GitHub CLI project command is now generally available. So last year, we announced the general availability of GitHub projects, and this is our project tracking and planning tool, and it's powered by GitHub issues. And at GitHub, we use GitHub to build GitHub, so you can say that projects is a pretty big part of my own personal workflow. But I'm going to be honest, I don't always love to context switch and go to a web browser to do stuff with my projects, especially if I'm knee deep in code or if I'm already on my terminal. And this is one reason that I love the GitHub CLI, because I can automate or access from the command line so much of the core you know, GitHub stuff from the website. And now the new projects command is generally available to all GitHub CLI users. And this is an upgrade from the now archived gh-projects command. I've got a link um, to all this uh, in the show notes down below to a blog post that's going to outline all the components, how it works. 
how you can use it. Um, and if you're needing to upgrade from the old GH projects command, I've got info uh, for that linked down below too. I'm actually working on a talk about the GitHub command line interface for a conference this fall, so the timing on this is very good news for me personally. Speaking of good things for me personally, the JS13K Games Competition kicks off in just a month, and this is a JavaScript coding competition for web game developers, and it's been running nearly since 2012, and the challenge is that the file size is limited to 13 kilobytes, that's right. But if you've watched past uh, episodes where we feature this competition, you can see the amazing things people build in just 13 kilobytes of JavaScript. It's great. The competition is going to kick off August 13th, and it ends on September 13th. But you're not going to know the theme until August 13th. But in the meantime, you can use the next month to get ready by checking out a couple of GitHub projects that I've got linked below via my, uh, my friend and comrade, Lee Riley. One is a starter kit from Cody Everson, and the other is called Contra, and it's a lightweight JavaScript gaming microlibrary that's optimized specifically for JS13K games. So I've got links to both of those down below, as well as information on the competition. And now it is time for my GitHub Project Spotlight, and this is where I highlight one project from the community to share and celebrate. So last week, the biggest news was all about Facebook, excuse me, excuse me, Meta, and Meta's new Twitter clone, Threads. So Threads took the world by storm. It got like 100 million users in something like five days. And I regret to inform you that Threads is sort of good. And you can follow me on Threads, by the way, I'm film underscore girl. Here's the problem with Threads. Even though there is promised ActivityPub support, there is no API and no way to access it from the web unless it's just to view a post, which is really stupid. So enter Junyo Ya a 19-year-old from South Korea who is building amazing stuff on the web, and Yaw is reverse engineering the Threads API and making it possible for people to build stuff on top of it, everything from embeddable posts to follower badges, even web clients. It is still early days, uh, but just seeing what the teens are doing just a week into this thing makes me so, so happy. I will share this caveat. You should not use this reverse engineered work for production, that goes without saying, and it is obviously unofficial. Maybe use a burner account to test stuff with it, blah, blah, blah. Look, I love seeing stuff like this regardless of, of the legalities, which I think are fine because it's reverse engineering. As I said on threads in response to seeing this, hack the planet! Hack the planet! Shut up and get in the car! Hack the planet! All right, links to the GitHub repo are linked down below and you can follow y'all on threads as well. And now it is time for my pick of the week. Okay, so one of the greatest music videos and songs of all time was Dilemma by Anelli featuring Kelly Rowland. And this video has achieved meme status because the phone that Kelly uses when she's trying to stop thinking about Nelly is a Nokia 9210 communicator. But instead of using the SMS app to send Nelly a text, Kelly opted to use Microsoft Excel to send him a message instead, which is just very funny. And I love you, and I need you. Nelly, I love you, I do. Come on, girl. And it's more than you ever know. Boy, it's for sure. And because it was 2002, the director didn't know any better, and obviously neither did Kelly. Here's, here's okay. the sitch, OK? Explain it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Microsoft Excel is. I, I don't know. I don't have a clue. So when I saw all these memes, I was like, I don't care. Anyway, I give this background because a TikTok went viral where an Excel influencer, yes, that's a thing, was like, but what if Kelly wasn't dumb and was actually using the hyperlink function instead uh, to send a mail to link? 20 years ago, Kelly Rowland tried to message her boo using Microsoft Excel, but was she justified in doing that? Let's take a look. So in the music video dilemma, Kelly Rowland is trying to message her boo saying, where are you at? Holler when you get this. But hear me out. What if she was about to do this? Did you know that with the hyperlink function, you can send more than just a website link? You can actually use the mail to scheme. So let's say that Kelly was about to type in the hyperlink function right here using mail to and then the email address, question mark, subject equals, hey, ampersand, body equals, equals and then she was going to obviously add an ampersand to that string of text so she could click on cell a1 and then naturally she was going to hit comma and then she was going to give it a friendly name like send email end quote and then clearly she was going to click the send email button naturally when that popped up she was going to hit send probably that part of the video was just cut off for time purposes what are your thoughts let me know in the comments let's start a good debate on this and hey this is a great theory but like most things on tiktok it's full of lies 
Thankfully, John Graham Cummings, who is also the brilliant mind behind moviecode.tumblr.com, has set the record straight. He attempted to do just that on his own Nokia 9210, and it turns out the feature didn't exist on the spreadsheet running on the 9210. In fact, that wasn't even Microsoft Excel, but some fake imposter, because the, the Finns thought they could get one past us. I feel like my whole life has been a lie. Anyway, this delighted me to no end because I love three things, Microsoft Excel, Naughty's and Audi's Tech, and Kelly Rowland, the second most famous member of Destiny's Child. Anyway, let me know your favorite weird tech feature from the aughts uh, music videos in the comments down below. I think mine is, is the weird Sony Vio and the Vegas video uh, editor that famed Mac user Taylor Swift used in the music video for Speak Now, uh, bonus track Hours featuring the guy from Friday Night Lights. I love that. Anyway, but I want to know your picks, or you know, you can let me know any of your thoughts on any of our other stories. Please leave us a comment. If you like this episode, go ahead and leave us a like and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.